Wonderful. Well, welcome back, everybody, to the second half of the Emergent Companies Showcase brought to you by Targeting Healthy Longevity and the Catalyst Group. Um, I'm Pepper Lanson, your host for the afternoon, and we are joined by Peter DeKaiser of Clara. Thank you for the kind introduction. Indeed, this is where I work. Let me open my presentation real quick. Well, uh, what we do at Clara is we are interested in uh, targeting senescent cells, which I'm sure you are uh, familiar with and uh, heard about before at this meeting. Uh, and we do so by targeting unique subtypes of senescent cells. And we do so um, to target cancer and aging. Um, just for safe hardware provision, as you know, uh, senescent cells are uh, the leading cause of many issues in, uh, in mice and are associated with numerous diseases in humans. In Clara, we have two areas in which we are focused. One of them is cancer uh, metastases that I will be talking about uh, today, even though it's an aging meeting, um, but that's just where we have the most evidence for. The other one is uh, metabolic diseases, especially liver cirrhosis and NASH. We are also the leading industrial partner on, uh, in, a, in a series of academic projects, projects especially on uh, uh, things like ILS, uh, neurological disorders, and musculoskeletal degeneration. The challenge that we, uh, we took upon ourselves is to see uh, if we can combat the deleterious effects that damaged cells have on our well-being. This is the kind of model that you probably are familiar with from textbooks, which is that if cells are damaged, healthy cells are damaged on, for instance, lipids or proteins or DNA, they can either be repaired or they can undergo cell death, apoptosis. However, as we get older, more and more damage is left behind, and at some point these cells can become irreparably damaged. This can lead to different events and primarily senescence. We now know, and I don't have time to go into all the details, that there are different kinds of senescent cells. So you can call them subtypes X, Y, and Z. One of the types that I will be talking about is what we call scarred senescence. Scarred senescent cells are hallmarked by uh, a strong amount of DNA damage and PML foci, as I'll show in a minute, and they secrete certain factors to their environment, which we now know cause or drive cancer and certain chronic diseases. The opportunity that we have provide at Clara is that we try to develop drugs against individual types of senescence with the focus on these scar senescent cells, which is our FOXO P53 interaction program, mainly oncology and liver diseases, as well as now age related diseases, which we started more recently. And we also have uh, evidence against a second type of uh, senescence and undisclosed uh, oncogenes. As said, our focus is eliminating diseases driven by certain types of senescent cells, primarily focused on scarred cells that are uh, driven by these two proteins. So this is the starting point of how we got to, to all of this. We identified about a decade ago that some senescent cells, when they are irreparably damaged and form these blobs of damage around the nucleus and also inside the nucleus, they can actually harbor two proteins, FOXO4 and an active form of P53. So this is marked by 53BP1, the binding partner of this active form. This complex is, uh, with, resides within what is called a PML body, as you can see here in purple. What we then realize is if you break apart these complexes by compounds, you can actually remove the protective layer of the damaged DNA and thereby kill these cells. So this is what we did. We designed a peptide, a cell penetrating deretroinversified peptide, which is a complicated term, but it basically means it's a peptide with all D amino acids in an inverted sequence. And if we do this, we can actually eliminate uh, these senescent cells. Oh. Yeah. Using this, we were able to uh, eliminate senescent cells in vitro, but more importantly, also in mice. Here you can see uh, an example of accelerated aging mice before and after treatment. And these have this particular type of scarred senescent cells that are very DNA damage driven. That's also how this mouse model was designed. So eliminating these cells from the mice could give them a, an altered rejuvenation or an improved health span. So then forward to Clara, because this was nice and we had a lot of media attention with it. But of course, you know, aging is difficult to translate to human clinical trials. 
So we said, why don't we go for disease first, where it's very clear, scar senescence plays an important role. And this turned out to be certain forms of cancer. Cancer cells are also often DNA damaged, have high PML markers, etc. We just uh, recently, actually two weeks ago, we, uh, opened our website. So if you're interested in it, you can also read more about it on our recently opened web website. We also had a, a press release not too long ago and we raised a new round of financing and hopefully we'll go for clinical translation soon. Then the fundamentals. Here you see the basis of the protein that we tried to target, which is the human P53 protein. Here you see in this, uh, in this spaghetti, the domains of uh, the end terminal domain of P53 indicated also with these three different types of color. In green, you can see amino acids, which are here indicated as sticks that can become negatively charged due to phosphorylation, which is what happens inside scarred senescent cells. So then these amino acids become negatively charged, some of them at least. We determine the three dimensional structure of P53. So again, this gray domain over here, this is the, tr the true three-dimensional structure. And we, may, we optimize our compounds to bind specifically to this domain. Here in green, you can indeed see one of these amino acids, this one to be precise, serine 46. And you can see that our compound loops around this amino acid. We therefore decided to spend time in optimizing the charge-charge interaction that occurs around this domain. And that's led to two new compounds. Here you can see the original compound, which I just showed you had these nice effects in mice, while tap binding in black and uh, binding to the uh, P53 when it is phosphorylated on this green amino acid over here. You can see that there's not a big difference. The new compounds, Clara drug fourth generation number 183 or Clara drug fourth generation number 177, they show much stronger difference between those two curves, meaning that we truly optimize these two compounds for specific binding to the phosphorylated form of P53, which happens in these bad scar senescent cells. To put a little bit of evidence to this, here you can see examples of senescent cells in culture. And you can see, for instance, a phosphorylated form of P53, again in green, it localizes in these dots. And as you can also see, this PMO protein that I introduced earlier nicely overlaps with these, with these speckles. As you can also appreciate, this is a much easier antibody to detect. So we decided to go for indications and diseases where PML is very high. Here you can see evidence that our compounds indeed eliminate cells where PML is high. Here you see on the y-axis the number of PML foci per nucleus in, in healthy cells, healthy cells with, treated with our drug, senescent cells or senescent cells treated with our compound. And indeed, at IC50 dose. So when we eliminate about half the cells, you can see the cells that remain were all low in this biomark. So indeed, we designed a compound that specifically eliminates this particular type of senescent cells. To make a long story short, we further uh, made further 3D structure determinations, and then we optimized the peptide even further in, in different areas. We optimize the stability. Here you see the amount of peptide left times and hours, and this is months. So you can, it's actually has a stability of months versus the original peptide that we used in the mice five years ago, which only had a half-life of two days. And we strongly improved the selectivity. So this is the selectivity of the original peptide for healthy cells versus bad scarred cells. And uh, here you can see the, the selectivity for the new compound, which is massively improved. To put some numbers to it, the new peptides are 50-fold better at on-target versus off-target binding, 20-fold higher selectivity on the scarred cells versus the healthy cells, and strongly improved apoptosis response. We truncated the compound, so we're saving the cost of goods, and we improved the charge-charge interaction, which also makes synthesis easier. We also improved the, the half-life from hours to months, but, uh, also in vivo. Then the use of these peptides in an actual disease. We, had, we realized that these female high cells are prevalent in many types of diseases. But as said, we, re, we also realized that for cancer, this was extremely clear. We therefore took a few cell lines, and we have done this for many types of cancer, ranging from colon cancer, breast cancer, uh, lung cancer, uh, and also melanoma more recently. And we plotted the amount of PML bodies versus another biomarker in the P53 pathway that is not yet disclosed. 
We can actually see that the, that the sensitivity over here is strongly associated with the number of female bodies. And this prompted us to move forward with mouse models. In humans, we also see that there's a substantial um, degree of positivity in this biomarker. Here you see breast cancer, but we have done other exercises for other types of cancer as well. So about a third of all breast cancer patients are extremely enriched in this biomarker. Our mouse models for, uh, for, for in this case, colon cancer, um, show a strong enrichment as well. So here you can see uh, and, uh, the amount of human uh, cancer cells, which are labeled in green, and you can see the amount of PML in red. And you can see that in the primary tumor, it's quite low, but liver metastases are strongly enriched, suggesting that it's indeed the metastases, which kill patients in the end, are enriched in the scarring features and therefore targetable with our compound. I will skip a lot of the pharmacology and pharmacodynamics that we perform, but we perform multiple maximally tolerated dose studies to identify the treatment schedule and, uh, and amplitude. Um, we also, we, and we actually identify that re repeated dosing can perfectly be done. We perform pharmacokinetic studies and show that there's a favorable uptake from the blood towards the tissues where we want the peptides to be. So primarily the liver and, uh, and kidney and lung, for instance. Um, and we have now optimized the dosing scheme to, uh, to something which can also be realistically done in the clinic. And we also now uh, have dose response efficacy. So just some evidence in the mice. Here you can see that uh, a, a very fast model for colon cancer metastases, um, which we implanted just in one week and allowed them to metastasize to the lungs. Then we treated for three times and we sacrificed the mice. We then looked at the number of proliferating cancer cells after treatment with the peptide, and we see that that did not change. So it's not that as if we remove or stall these scar senescent cells, we would enhance cancer proliferation. That was a concern some people were having. It does not happen. Instead, if you look at the number of dead cancer cells, this is strongly increased. So indeed, we are hitting with just a very short treatment. We are strongly eliminating these uh, scarring high cancer cells. If we then took a bit of a slower model and um, uh, we implanted in one week and then treated early on and then did not continue the treatment at all. So we just left them and we look at the number of liver metastases later on, we can actually see that these are much, much lower. So just a very short hit and run uh, attack on these cancer metastases wipes them out and they don't necessarily come back. And again, this was all done at a, uh, a dosing amplitude, which is much lower than the maximally tolerated dose. So that allows it for clinical translation in the end. And this is much with scarring biomarkers such as female. The last experiment we performed was on breast cancer. So different types of cancer. And we also have now data on, on glioblastoma and on melanoma, which I won't show today. But this is an example for breast cancer, which is a slower growing model on the flank of, uh, in the fat pads of the mice. And during treatment, we have stable disease. So we have only treated for one week and uh, we get stable disease of the tumor. If we then look at the number of metastases, which is in the end, again, what the patients die of because the primary tumor is always excised in patients, we see that the metastases, which are positive for PML, we, we identify that, are all almost all eliminated. And here this is quantified. <laughs> if we look at these waterfall plots, you can also nicely see that about 10 out of 11 mice progress to form massive metastases, whereas it was only uh, in four out of 11 of the, um, um, of the treated mice. And if you open up the mice post-mortem and you look at the number of liver metastases, it's much, much lower. Again, these were high in markers of scarring and the peptide nicely reaches these tumors. This is our uh, route, route to the clinic. So we are now currently performing pre-IND, uh, preclinical IND labeling studies and we're performing CMC and regulatory affairs as well. We hope to start the phase two, one clinical trial by uh, 2024. In conclusion, senescent cells can drive chronic diseases, including cancer. However, the problem is that there are different kinds of senescence, so it's heterogeneous. We identified, we generated two new compounds, clear as drug for generation 177 and 183, and they are effective against scarred cells. We show that these are a fav favorable pharmacokinetics, ADME and TOX in vitro and in vivo, can kill scarring positive cells in vivo and effectively counter, counter metastases of different kinds of cancer models at doses that are far from the maximally tolerated dose. 
We currently have ongoing programs for chronic diseases, uh, including age-related diseases. This thank is the, the team that we're working with, and thank you for your time. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Peter. I really appreciate the opportunity to learn more about it. It sounds like you've really gone through the science in a very methodical and thoughtful way. And we will look forward to seeing progress, and congratulations on the recent round of funding. Thank you. Absolutely. We are very happy with it.